God bless everyone who joined. This is Brother Joseph Herbert Jr. And I want to do this video. You know, I think on the things that God, as every other believer in Christ Jesus, um, thinks on. We are supposed to meditate on what is just and noble and true and praiseworthy and of good report and lovely. And if any kind of virtue, we meditate on those things. And one of the things that I meditate on is salvation. Are you called or are you chosen? That is the question, because there is a difference. Jesus says, many are called, but few are chosen. And, um, you know, you think about it. You may have been raised in church in traditions of man or, or traditionally in the church setting but you did not live a, a Christian lifestyle according to the word of God. You know, you could have been raised to the traditions of man and have you believing things that are contrary to the word of God. So you should ask yourself, are you chosen? Are you called or are you chosen? So I want to go into this, this uh, chapter in Matthew 22. It talks about the parable of the wedding banquet. The par a parable is a short, is a, 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 a analogy in a sense to describe, to um, describe what Jesus is talking about when he, he uh, explains the mysteries. The, the mysteries are explained to all the brothers and sisters in the Lord but men who are men and women and even children who are outside of the faith who live a lifestyle of rejection or lifestyle of rebellion they don't understand they maybe want to find a way to get to heaven or find a way um, to want to go to heaven but they don't understand. They don't have a clear understanding on how to do that. Jesus says the kingdom, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. So I'm going to read this parable. Uh, Jesus, it starts in, I'm going to start in verse 1. I'm going to read all the way down to verse 14. But as I read, I'm going to explain some of this stuff because, you know, again, Jesus is explaining in the parable. And so in verse 1, uh, it says, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables and said the kingdom of heaven is like to a certain king which made a marriage for his son now what is he talking about the kingdom of heaven the kingdom of heaven is at hand is within your grasp it is within your grasp when you obey god when you realize that you are a sinner that you are in need of salvation when you realize that you have lived a complete lifestyle rejecting God or being rebellious to God the kingdom of God is at hand all you have to do is repent and turn from your ways your own way of thinking have a change of mind so he said the kingdom of heaven is like to a certain king which made a marriage for his son so the the God the Father he's creating a marriage for Jesus the Son of God and it talks about that in Revelation 19 Will you be at the wedding supper of the Lamb? Is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? So, uh, verse 3, And he sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. So, us as born-again believers in Christ Jesus, we invite men. First, we tell them repent. We invite people. And when I say men, I mean all, everyone. Um, we invite them, A, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. God is inviting you to come to his, his wedding. He wants you there at his wedding. But you have to have the right garments. You have to have the wedding garments. And I'm going to explain to you what that means in a few seconds as I read on. And cool. Okay. In verse 4. Again, he sent forth other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden. Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatlings are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. 
He's, he's inviting you again. But they made light of it, meaning they, they ignored the calling. They ignored the calling. They, re, they rejected. They was not concerned. So they made light of it, of the calling. When, when we go out and preach the word of God and we let them know, hey, Jesus Christ is coming back. He's soon to return. He's coming at an hour you did not expect. You need to repent and turn from your ways and give your life fully to Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel. So when you ignore that, this is what Jesus is talking about. He's talking about people that they made light of it and went their ways. They went to their own ways, their own way of thinking. They, uh, they leaned to their own understanding. One one to his farm, another to his merchandise or his business. So people got into the, may, may have got full, of, um, uh, full with their mind of their own way of thinking, of working their own jobs. They got full and busy and not concerned the things of the kingdom of God, not concerned of uh, what Jesus required of all men to come to him for all who are, who are, need of salvation and the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them it's talking about these who may have got offended at the preaching of the gospel and it's, it's written in the old testament there are um people who get martyred for the gospel who die for the gospel it's talking it, jesus is prophesying with this parable and he's explaining it to you but when the king heard of it the hurt thereof, he was wroth, he was angry, he was frustrated, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. It talks about that in the Old Testament. I think about Sodom and Gomorrah. The land was filthy, the land was uh, in, indulged in sin, fornication, sodomy, all types of things was going on in Sodom and Gomorrah. And so when the Lord destroyed that city, this is, the, this is the things that are, are happening. It's happening in today. The Lord is getting ready to come and return, and return soon return. And um, he's coming back for his people. Let me see. Lost my place. Where at? But when the king heard of thereof, he was wroth, and he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then he says to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. So, again, you never know when Jesus Christ is coming back. He's preparing, he's preparing his church. The church is the bride. The church is the bride, and Jesus Christ is the bridegroom. So the Father is preparing the wedding, the wedding supper of the Lamb for the Son of God, of the Most High God, Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel. And we are invited. All we have to do is obey the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will enter in. He says, uh, then he says to his servants, the wedding is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go therefore into the highways and as many as you will find, bid them, bid to the marriage. So the servants, the Christians, we, we went out to the highways and gathered together all as many as they found both bad and good both bad and good and the wedding was furnished with guests so when we stand before god he's gonna we're all gonna stand before god the the bad and the good it makes me think about the other this other scripture in matthew 25 the sheep and the goats the sheep was on the right hand the goats were on the left and um so the the the, the uh, wedding was furnished and when the king came to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Let me, let me cross-reference right here. That's in verse 11, uh, chapter 22 in Matthew. Let me cross-reference here. I'm going to read it again. He says unto him, friend, how, how do you come in here? Now, verse 11. And when the king came and see, see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now I'm going to go into Revelation 19 for a minute and I'm going to explain that to you because it is a cross reference. It talks about when we stand before God and chapter 19 verse 7 it says I'm going to start in verse 7 let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him 
for the marriage of the lamb is come and his wife has made herself ready the church the, the church made themselves ready jesus says be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect that's matthew 24 verse 44 and to her was granted that, that she be arrayed in fine linen clean and white for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints so what is the righteousness of the saints that looks like obedience to Christ Jesus because Jesus says if you love me keep my commandments or if you love me, if you meaning if you love me obey me so obeying Jesus Christ is the white linen because we are the bride the church is the bride we got to be prepared to meet the bridegroom for the fine linen is the righteousness of the saints and verse 9 of Revelation 19 and he said to me right blessed are they which are called to the marriage supper of the lamb and he said unto me these are the true sayings of God so the Lord is calling the obedient blessed they are they which are called to the marriage supper of the lamb your righteousness are filthy rags in the sight of God apart from God but Jesus Christ is righteous Jesus Christ is the Word of God he commands all men everywhere to repent of their sins and so when we obey God it looks like righteousness in his sight to the world the world might scorn us the world might reject us and some may receive it like the, like I titled this video many are called but few are chosen and so back in Matthew 22 and when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now the garment represents the lifestyle of a person in this world. The, the, the wedding garment that this person did not have on, when Jesus, when the Lord will ask, and he says to him, friend, he called him friend, how did you come in here not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. So how, do you, how are you expecting to get in? If the fine white linen is the righteousness of the saints, the Christians, how will your garments look when you stand before God? If you're living a lifestyle of rebellion and rejection towards God, how would that look like in the sight of, in the sight of God? Because he sees all, he knows all. You may be living a lifestyle of rebellion. You may want to live for the world. You may want to live to whoever you are serving as an idol you may look up to you may have looked up to Kobe Bryant or you may look up to LeBron James or your favorite rapper your favorite secular artist and you, you listen to ungodly music or you watch ungodly movies receiving bad impartations and that can affect the way you think so you as you receive that as you receive what the world loves that God hates you are receiving the garments of the world and it's even worse when you profess to be a believer because if you're going to wear the name of Christ it's going to be the Lord will is a stricter judgment it's a harsher judgment on those who profess that they are Christian so and in verse uh, verse 12 verse 12 of Matthew 22 and he said to them friend how did you come in here not having on a wedding garment which is the lifestyle of a person and he was speechless you're not gonna be able to say anything when you stand before God and he judges you if you know that you live the lifestyle of rebellion um, then said the king God the father to the servants bind him hand and foot take him away cast him into outer darkness and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth many are called but few are chosen my question is again are you called or are you chosen if you're a called then follow up on the calling so you can be chosen Jesus when, when when the Lord chooses you he says this in John chapter 15 you did not choose me but I chose you and ordained you that you should bear fruit and that your fruit should remain that whatever you ask the father in my name he will give it to you what does that look like you receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior you repent 
it is a manifestation that the Lord has chosen you. So when you choose to obey God, when you choose to have the reverential fear of the Lord, the Lord chooses you and you are classified as the righteousness of the saint because his righteousness is the fine white linen that talks about that in Revelation 19. So how will your garments look like when you stand before God? Will you have the garments of the world or will you have the garments of Christ? Will you have the garments of praise or will you have the, gar the garments of the ungodly? Uh, Psalm, I love Psalms chapter 1. It says, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate on it day and night. And he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that brings forth his fruit in his season, and his leaf also will not wither, and whatsoever he does, he will prosper. Then it says this, The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff that the wind dries away. What is chaff? Chaff is Unco is uncovered uh, is seed coverings seed coverings so that's be easily blown away so the ungodly will light the chaff that the wind drives away uh, let me go to it because I don't want to paraphrase that either it is the glory of God that and it's a blessing to know that you are obeying the Lord Jesus Christ here it is it says, the ungodly are not so, but I like the chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment. The, the Meaning the ungodly will not stand in the judgment day of God. You will, the ungodly will perish. The ungodly will not go guiltless. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Sinners who willfully sin. They cannot stand in the congregation of the righteous. They can't come to the church of the faithful saints because they're going to hate the preaching of the gospel. They're going to hate the righteousness of, the, of God. They're going to hate the obedience to God because it opposes the flesh. It opposes the carnal way of thinking. And the last verse in Psalms 1, For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly will perish. So, Jesus Christ, that's why you had John 3, 16. The way of the ungodly will perish. Your way of thinking, if you're thinking to the things of your own understanding and not according to the word of God, the will of God, you are, you are classified as ungodly. Your way will perish. You will perish. You will have your place in the lake that burns with fire. And I don't, I don't, and I don't take that lightly because I love I don't desire none to perish. God does not desire you to perish. He wants you to have eternal life with Jesus Christ. So that's why you have John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. He loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever will believe on him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. Will not perish. You continue to believe on Jesus Christ, meaning obey what you read. God will never fail, fail you. God will bless you. I want to go higher. I don't want to be stagnated. I don't want to have, I don't want to live a, a life of secret sin. That may, maybe your, your brothers and sisters may not see what you're doing, but God sees what you're doing. Maybe you have something in your history on your cell phone that you have no business looking at. God sees what you're doing. Repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. So the Lord, the Lord calls you to repent. He calls you to turn from your ways. Um, I, and it's not me saying this. It's the Holy Spirit through the word of God saying this. God wants you saved. God wants you born again. And he loves you. God saves you for himself, by himself, and from himself from himself because the wrath of God abides on the children of disobedience for himself because God loves you and by himself because Jesus Christ is God manifested in the flesh so this is just want to be a quick video I wanted to, to do because I was meditating on the word of God and 
we must you must you must be born again this is brother joseph herbert jr and this is for his glory